in the beginning of the first quarter of the 20th century, in 1923 to be precise, the Ghani family, the renowned Paris publishers, built Le Chateau La Croix en A in Normandy, France. Fast forward almost a hundred years to 2019, and my two friends sold everything they had to buy the chateau. How sad and unloved it looked after many years abandoned. There was so very much to do, from knocking down wall to dancing to the gramophone. I love you to join Miss Anna and Peter as they take you on a journey to make the chateau truly splendid again. Love all those renovation projects. Come and join them with an insight into their life in France. And show you around, old sport. Part three. So welcome back, guys, to the third and final part of our landing project films. So um, in this episode, uh, we're finishing. Uh, mainly the decorating. So we're putting up our wallpaper and uh, universally it was loved, the, the blue and the gold Art Deco paper. So that's going up above the dado. Thank you for your feedback and comments on that. Below the dado we're going to go for a green, uh, a green uh, paint finish, the same as the ceiling, to tie those two parts in. And then on the window opening uh, we've got a second-hand a curtain rail to hang, and this is a hardwood curtain rail. We bought two of them for two euros from our local Brocomps. And then on the columns, and if you remember the first part of this uh, video series, the three parts, um, we said we'd make pillars, and um, originally we were just going to have an opening, take the door away, and have an opening into the hall. And uh, Miss Anna had a splendid idea to say, well, look, can we build some um, pillars? And so uh, we've been taking you through the journey of making those pillars out of 6mm MDF uh, and they've come out quite nice but we've had some thought about uh, what colour to paint them and me being, I'm not the colour guy, I'm colour blind unfortunately so it doesn't help uh, so whenever I get put into a position of choosing colours I go for safe, really safe colours so I was, you know, Mr why don't we paint them gloss white and you know let's be adventurous and have some gold in them as well um, but we've had a think about it and we've had some feedback on our channel uh, some of the ideas are to highlight some of those inset panels in gold and go for a white finish uh, paint the bottom part of the pillar below the trim uh, the same color as the dado but we uh, below the dado but we were worried that uh, they would be lost in, in that and we, we weren't comfortable with that so what we're going to try in this episode is to paint a grey and black marble effect which we'll take you through in some detail and it kind of feels right to have big grand solid pillars in marble i mean it'd be beautiful if we could afford to pay for marbles but so far we're about 30 euros in on materials for the mdf um, so, uh, you know, if we can get, with a bit of paint doesn't cost much, if we can get a really dramatic uh, end result for not very much, that would be perfect. Uh, then we've got to do the doors. So the doors, if you remember, before we took them off, uh, we've got two doors here left, uh, one door into the hallway here, another door into this down, uh, sorry, this landing's toilet. Uh, they were painted a horrible uh, uh, emulsion white. And we're going to do a bit of swapping around. Uh, so we're going to um, resurrect the wood effect on those doors, give them a, a nice varnish and we think that would look quite appropriate for here with some uh, black or gold uh, door locks and do door furniture. So marbling the columns and um, what we're going to use for that is paint that we've already got and so here we've got uh, this grey this grey here, which is quite a light grey colour. Uh, we've got a slightly darker, a slightly darker grey here. Um, I've got some black, beautiful dark uh, 
solid black. Um, we've got a roller tray, which I'm going to use uh, to mix up um, some colours. If we need to change those tones slightly, we can add black to the, the grey to get it to, to, to a, a darker grey. And then finally, just uh, once the final effect has been put on, um, some um, emulsion white just to do some highlights to the veins. Uh, the final uh, job will be to then uh, apply a few coats of varnish, clear water-based uh, varnish. to put some clear coat varnish on and get a first layer of that on and then get some gold painted on the dado so probably going to put one coat on do the gold and then call it quits because it's been a long day first coat of green on uh, the dado down to the skirting board. So we have finished, right? We wondered whether we'd have enough. This is uh, two rolls and it was a little bit worrying, wasn't it, honey, at the end? No, we had loads. How much have we got left? This. I've got a 
all that we've got left. <laughs> Just, do you think we could take that back and get a credit note? <laughs> Plenty left, look. <laughs> so, really happy. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, ready for dinner now. Let's have some dinner. <laughs> so, if you remember on the uh, opening of the video when we showed you where the doors were, they were all finished in this horrible white um, kind of emulsion. And previous to that, the doors had a beautiful finish on them. Um, this is a door that I've got from upstairs. So what we're going to do is replace the doors that were here with the doors that were from upstairs because the upstairs project, uh, we're knocking through a few rooms and we don't need as many doors. So these are surplus for the time being. And there's a bit of a mystery with the this door opening. This door leads through to a small landing, uh, which we've got to remove this the remaining part of this built-in wardrobe. But this leads through to one of the bedrooms with its ensuite bathroom. But for some reason, and it's an original feature, you can see here that the locks for this landing were on this side, uh, seen on this side, which is most odd. So. You'd see, this is from the bathroom, but it's exactly the same. This would be on the landing side uh, rather than on the bedroom side, which is just really odd. We cannot work out why that would be the case. So what I've got to do now is transfer those hinges to this door because, because it's switched, these hinges land on this side of the door, not this side of the door. So they all need to be brought over to the other side. So there's a bit of chiseling out to do. Um, so we're going to offer the other door up to make sure the hinges are in the same place uh, and then transfer them over. So what I have to do here, this is the door from the white door with the lock on the outside that was opening up onto the hallway. Uh, this is the side of the hinge needs to be on, so obviously this is on the wrong side. So these hinges need to be brought over on this door so that this hinge lands in the same way as this one. So what I've done is I've lined up this hinge, so this one will simply move exactly the same place but be cut in to land on this side. And then very slight, you can see this one is slightly down, so this one will need to come up very slightly. And then this one is a little bit further out. See this is where it should land and this is where it is landing. So this one needs to be brought over and down. Now, unbelievably the hinges from the brown finished door from on the top floor are a different size to the hinges that we've got on here. So unfortunately they don't fit. So we could either drill them out which is a pain or take the old hinges off which were already on there and put those on, so I'm going to have to do that. Um, fitted the door and because this door didn't come from this frame it's very slightly too big so we just need to plane off this side from about here downwards um, to get that into a nice snug fit so what I've done here is just use masking tape to give us a line to plane down to So if you remember on the uh, earlier videos, uh, we showed that this door was very odd because this frame is opening 
onto the hallway when really it should open into this small hallway here. And for some reason, originally they had the lock on the outside here. And you can see there where the catch went. And the idea was to flip this and put the lock on the inside but of course it can't go on the inside because because the door is effectively closing this way it would need this to be round that way and unfortunately I can't switch that round I can't flip that round and I've checked all the other locks uh, in the chateau and they're all the same uh, obviously because the lock is meant to 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 engage as it closes so reluctantly I'm gonna have to take these uh, key covers off and uh, refit the lock on the outside. It's not something I want to do because I don't want to see the lock on the outside of the door. Uh, but that's where we are. So I'm going to fit the old lock back onto here, uh, put the old hardware back in, and we'll just have to make it look as good as it possibly can. Okay, so we've made that as pretty as uh, we can do, um, taking it back to the bare metal. I've done this before for the downstairs um, washroom and actually it gets quite a nice patina over it because it's not outdoors. If it was outdoors, um, we would have to coat it, but uh, it, goes, it goes quite a nice grey silver patina. And of course you get all the brass back, uh, so that's all freed up, mechanism's great, let's get it fitted. got this um, brushwood which is actually meant for foubois. Put a light coat on and then drag this over the top. Um, but we want to try and match in some of the uh, existing on this wood. And just look at the colour here, it's absolutely perfect. I mean, it could not be, it could not be a better match. So we've um, repaired the uh, uh, with, with some wood stain, chips on the doors, and just come and have a look. This is a water-based water -based varnish, just a clear stain, but it, uh, yeah, come and have a look at that. It, it comes out absolutely, I don't even see the, the shine in there, but it's just beautiful. 
And who in their right mind, honey, would look at a door like this and say, let's paint it emulsion white. Okay, so we've just uh, rubbed down the uh, black ironwork there and given that its uh, first coat of gloss paint. And now uh, we need to put a curtain rail up here. And some time ago we bought two of these curtain tracks uh, with nice turned ends. And they've actually got a mechanism here to, uh, to draw them and some pulleys at this end. We're not going to use those, we don't need to. Um, it came with these, I think these are tie backs, uh, but no brackets to mount to the wall. And we bought these two for two euros. Uh, so a euro each for all of that. So what I'm going to do now is measure it up. We need to cut it down, it's too long. And then somehow we need to make brackets uh, from these uh, mushroom type uh, tie backs uh, so we can find some way to put it up against the wall. Got these turned ends that just screw on. Okay, so they're quite nice. Bring these off. That's just we just nailed just one nail in there by the looks of it. Just prise that away. Good. Nail out. Is that? It isn't. Might as well take the other one off to the other end. Nice. Nail away. to mount to the wall and rather nicely these ends come away beautifully turned seems criminal doesn't it because I'm going to cut all these up but they've actually cut a thread into that hardwood and then these have been turned so we'll keep these but we can't use these on this project but they'll come in handy for doorknobs or something and then this then screws away from the base so what we'll do is we'll screw, uh, sorry, we'll fix these to the wall to, to, to act as the carriers and then these can screw into those and cover the screws. So this will come out from the wall, that will project out from the wall and then this we then fix in behind here like that. But because this is obviously screwing in, I can't fix this permanently to that. I'm going to have to uh, dry fix it here. Um, it's going to have to be screwed from the front. There's no ch there's no opportunity to do anything other than that. Uh, fit that into here. So this goes onto the wall first. Then I screw these into there. Second, and then offer this up last, and screw that to the holder. So all that will be seen is uh, a screw from the front here, which you know is unavoidable. So we need.
please help my good friends. Press like and subscribe to stay tuned for further adventures. All support.